<laughs> okay. Well, I have two answers for you. Um, you wanted me to be revolutionary. Uh, the revolutionary answer is that it's not a question of benefiting from it. It's their legal obligation. Uh, because in the Convention on the Rights of the Child, the responsibility for the education of children is clearly that of the parents and not that of the state. The state's role is to support the parents in ways the parents want. And in that way, it's not a question of benefiting from involving the parents, but it's, all, it's, it's a question of having the right system when actually the responsible people are responsible, and those responsible for supporting these people, namely the government, is supporting them. But of course it's not that easy. And um, for a country that is a relatively young democracy, uh, the other answer is that uh, it is a way of maturing democracy. Because I strongly believe that school, where you have professional educators whose job is to teach people, not just children, different things, uh, this should be the ultimate safe environment to learn active citizenship. And active citizenship is always participating in decision making and of course executing decisions that affect you. Is there anything that affects the parents more than the education or the life of their children? No. So by involving them in the decision making and the execution process, they are offered a kind of safe playground to learn real democracy. And it is a big issue because in our countries, I'm Hungarian. Even the teachers, or the majority of teachers, were brought up in a non-democratic community. And the majority of our families are not democratic either. Uh, active citizenship starts when you ask your two-year-old whether they want chocolate or lemon ice cream. You know that they don't like lemon. But once they did the decision that they demand lemon, you tell them that you chose it, you have to eat it. Involvement in school, both of the parent and the child, is such a, a very serious playground. But still, it's much more moderated and much less threat, life-threatening than making decision about the national budget, as a voter at the national elections will do. So these are my two answers to these questions, what the government will benefit. On the one hand, they will benefit from having a rightful situation according to the Convention on the Rights of the Child, but on the other hand they will have a situation where their citizens will have a playground to learn active citizenship in a context that they are really, really engaged in. Well, I don't, I'm not sure. I would even say I don't think so. But uh, that's not the point. So if you have a government that only is interested in PISA results, then you should have a lot of active citizens who are interested in um, proper 21st century education, which is not only about these technical centralized tests, and that can start a debate. Actually, when it comes to PISA results, I think it's much more important to have tendencies um, analyzed so if the PISA results are increasing, then you, because it's one part of having a good education system, then you are on the right track. In, in most countries where PISA results are relatively or very low, is that children are tested in exercises that they're not used to. So it's not just the, the issue of, for example, comprehension, reading comprehension, but it's also an issue of being reading comprehension being tested in a way that children are not used to. So I think when it comes to PISA results, it's not an absolute number. Um, you should uh, see the tendencies and tell your politicians to look at the tendencies and not the actual result numbers. Well, 
I don't think there is a direct relationship between the two. But uh, of course, uh, parents need support to become the best possible parents of their children. Some of them will be involved parents, and some of them will be non-involved but still good parents. I think it would be quite funny to have um, two million parents, that's the number of parents in my country, all wanting to be involved in curriculum development. The important thing is to find those few people who really want to go in depth in that part of the issue. But at the same time, it's really important to offer the possibility to everybody to have a say on something that is really important for them. And um, to have a broad range of topics where parents have a decisive role is a very good uh, opportunity for everybody to find what they are interested in. If the same parent would be in, uh, involved in each area, that parent will not be a good parent because they will have no time for their children. But the important thing is that you have a wide range of things where they have a decision, uh, and also to find the people who are right for those areas of the decision-making process. I'm personally totally uninterested in the colors of the classroom wall, but there are some parents in my son's class who would come together, talk about the material they want to use, uh, they're supporting the kids, and, and they are having fun, and they are the best possible parents for their children. And I know that I'm, I shouldn't bore the other parents with issue around um, renewing the pedagogical program of the school. I know the right questions, because there are some issues that should be discussed but not the general pedagogical background, because that's not interesting for the majority of people. But this is just normal. So once there is a, a wide range of topics, there will be a job share in a, in a good uh, situation. If it's burdening just two, three parents, then they will be the worst parents for their own children. But at the same time, by being involved in the education of your own children, so we're not talking about schooling, but consciously being involved in the education from cradle um, <clears throat> by doing things together, by being conscious of what kind of role model you are for your children, you are also gaining a lot. So becoming a good parent is a very important part of your lifelong learning. And um, actually, it has a market price. So uh, there are people who can actually utilize this, this knowledge. Um, there are some countries where uh, parents who are stay-at-home parents, when their children leave home, they become involved in training other parents. But also, it, it's a joke, but I think it's a very true joke. Uh, there was a joke about uh, a job advertisement for a general manager. And um, the skills were listed that were needed, logistics, time management, financial management, um, <clears throat> planning ahead, things like that. And uh, a mother of four applies for the job, saying that I've never worked, but I have to manage my four children, boop, 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 and I have even PR skills, because you have to make them eat the broccoli. <laughs> and uh, what we are working now on to become a bit more serious, is um, in Europe, um, having some, some kind of validation and certification of skills that you learn informally or non-formally, from handiworks in a women's club, you know, knitting, to management skills learned through parenting. It's a hot topic, because for more and more employers, um, traditional certificates, like a university diploma, is less valuable than these skills. So what we are working on is a validation scheme that parents can go to a center and choose, choose the topics they are best at, from management to healthcare, social services, education, whatever, and have their skills assessed and certified so that they can actually use it on the job market. So it's not just the personal development issue, but it actually has very hard value on the labor market.